Yo, what is up Comfy Gang? It's your boy Comfy Neat. So for today's video, I wanted to talk about a problem that I am currently going through, but that I am sure a lot of needs in my position are going through as well. Because let's face it, a lot of us in a sense do want to escape this lifestyle, even if it means selling out and becoming a quote unquote wage cuck, wage slave, working for your crappy boss who whips you with his belt and makes you do 20 hours of paperwork all all the while laughing maniacally and stepping on you like a doormat and unfortunately for me or i don't know fortunately whatever the case is i do want to at least try having a job which is why that was one of my new year's resolutions which i talked about in my new year's resolution video but one of the biggest barriers to this that I'm sure a lot of needs in my position are facing as well is that we have to hand in resumes to get a job essentially. And guess what the problem is? I have a big gaping hole in my resume. <laughs> and uh, I'm kind of shit posting when I say it like that, but it is, it is true that Throughout all my life, I have literally only worked one job officially. No, it wasn't even official because it wasn't on paper or anything. It's not like I signed a contract or got paid an official paycheck. The only work experience I can say I've, I've ever had is that I've worked at my cousin's bake shop for the weekend, which I also talked about previously. But yeah, that's pretty much all I've done. I basically worked for two days. And after that, she never hired me again. I guess mostly because she already, already had the staff and she probably didn't want to have to train me and maybe she just thought I was incompetent or something. But uh, the point is, is that, well, what the hell do I put on my resume? Uh, and the reason resumes are so important is because although ideally in an ideal world, people or businesses should evaluate people purely on the merit of the work that they're doing. Uh, I guess the fact is, the fact of the matter is, is that most businesses don't really have the time to sit through every single candidate and audit every single one of them, audit their performance, train them from scratch. And not only that, but most businesses are looking for people with work experience who have worked several jobs, I don't know, maybe so that they know that these ty these types of people are the more obedient kind, that could be part of it. But more realistically, it all it's also, a lot of it has to do with businesses wanting to find people that they don't have to train. They want to find people that they know have worked in a work environment before, because in my opinion, most work environments are pretty much the same the sort of grind, the, the hustle, having to clock in on time every single day, the paperwork. Sure, it's like there are differences between each sort of field, but at the, at the end of the day, the pressures and the, the social environment and the social dynamics between worker and boss and co-employees and everything are pretty much similar between most jobs. And then you also have the fact that many jobs, because of the whole not wanting to train your employee aspect of it are really looking to find people that have had work in pretty similar fields. So let's say you want to work at the kitchen of Wendy's, uh, not the most ambitious job I know, but when we look at your resume, they're probably going to be looking for things like whether you've worked at McDonald's, Burger King, other fast food places, because all the other fast food places probably have pretty much the exact same quote unquote workflow or standard operating procedure as each other, where I guess in a fast food place, it would be being able to work under really high time constraints so that you can deliver the food as fast as possible making sure your hair doesn't fall in the food, putting everything in the fryer and hitting the timer and setting, I don't know, the French fries 
in the oil for five minutes. I've never worked in a fast food place, so I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. But <laughs> um, yeah, so, but I think that's sort of maybe not the best example, but I think it gets my point across that it's pretty much the same in all work environments where even if it's something like data entry or you're a nurse in healthcare, then they'll probably be looking for something like personal support worker experience or whether you've worked jobs where you're taking care of people physically and you know lifting them out of chairs. So it's basically the same. And when you don't have anything on your resume, then in an ideal world, let's say if you lived in a small town and there was really nobody else out there, then I'm sure that they would probably give you a chance to see if you could stand on your own two feet and eventually grow into the role because I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure most people are capable of growing to fill the shoes required to fit into the average job because most jobs out there really aren't that demanding both cognitively and physically and most people should be able to adapt to adapt within a matter of months or even weeks or even days even but the issue is that because of things like globalization and just people traveling back and forth between different local areas and moving to new places and the just the massive the ever, not mass, but ever growing population sizes of pretty much every major city out there and even towns and things like that, because there are 8 billion people on this world and counting. There's going to be 9 billion soon. And the rate at which the human population is growing is at an exponential rate, at least until food shortages really start to affect population growth. But the point is that these companies are getting so many job applications from so many individuals that the, the ball is basically in their court. All the power is with them. It's like dating basically where if you're an attractive person, you are probably getting hundreds of matches and right, was it swiping right? Right swipes on Tinder, for example. So the balls on your core, you get to choose because you have all these people going after you. And it's the exact same thing with these sort of businesses where they're probably getting hundreds to thousands of applications a day because people are just desperate for work, especially during COVID time. And because someone like me and other people like me, like other needs, don't have anything on their work resume, why would these companies in their right minds ever bother ever bother giving us a chance when our resumes are empty, when they could just go to the hundreds of other resumes with people who have had work experience and that prob have probably worked in similar businesses already, already know how to play the game, so to speak, know what to write, know what to say to get a job, know how to fit in into a work environment. And while Maybe we need might be able to learn that eventually. It probably will take time, especially since most of us are somewhat socially inept. And as a result of that, they're obviously going to pick the people who have stuff on their resume. And people, it's not only that, but even if you have worked a job before, let's say you worked at Subway five years ago or even three years ago, and then you have a two, three year long gap, these companies will see that gap and then they will think, hmm, why did this person not work for this period of time? Is there something wrong with them? Sure, they might be able to work in this job eventually, but I don't want to have to risk the resources and time and slightly lower productivity to train this individual when I could just pick from this massive pool of applicants who can slot right into my system like a good cog into a machine and I won't have to worry about that. And therefore, people who have big gaping holes in their resumes are pretty much effed. And that is the position where I'm at. And 
Not all hope is lost though. I do have relatives that are, are willing to lie to me on my resume. But the fact, uh, but the fact is that, is that, um, well, firstly, I feel like my resume, which I've actually already written, isn't very convincing. I've pretty much just put a bunch of random crap on it. Um, and the two jobs that I listed, one is pastry chef, or not pay, but like food professional, food handler, kitchen aide or something. And the other is creative writer, because that's what essentially what I was doing for my aunt under the table. But the thing is, if they ever decide to audit me and look into what I was actually doing, then it would just become a whole inconsistent story of lies and deception. And I'm pretty sure that they would see through that. So it's like, why would they have to deal with, why would they want to deal with that when they could just pick someone who has the, the, the right criteria for their job search? And also the fact of the matter is that both of the jobs that I picked could not be more unrelated to each other as well as to the things that I want, at least in my ideal job, some sort of inside office space. Like I don't have any data entry or whatever job. I don't have any retail experience. I don't have any, I don't know, whatever experience that would get me a decent paying, quote unquote, average job. And so therefore, um, even if I do hand in this resume, I'm not really expecting anything great. I am thankful though that they will, they are willing to, I guess, quote unquote, be my reference and fill that role. So I have managed to sort of, I guess, lie about my work experience, but hopefully that is all that it will take for me to get a job. But then again, is getting a job even that great? I personally think it'll be a crap time, but the only way for me to find that out is to essentially go through it myself. But anyways, yeah. And that this is just purely talking about quote unquote resumes for jobs. There's also things like resumes for various aspects of your life because a resume is essentially a story about your work history. And we honestly have resumes for multiple areas of, of your life. For example, social media is a resume of your social life and your social experience. Then you things, then you have things like the stories you tell other people. So that could probably be a entirely different topic for another video. But anyways, that's all I have to say for now. And as far as getting a job goes, I'm not too hopeful. If you guys really want to uh, hear me read aloud from what I wrote in my resume, maybe just let me know in the comments or something. It's uh, pretty laughable though, but it's just, I use some, some one of those online resume generators and just kind of edited the, the pre sort of the pre selected, the pre, the preset options basically, and just kind of changed it up a little bit, but that's pretty much what I'm using. Cause I don't know if there's any way to make your resume unique, because if you try and sound too unique, you probably sound like a try hard or something and just comes across as really corny and as if you have no idea what you're doing. I'm sure these, these sites probably know what will work in most resumes or what has the most success, but I'm rambling at this point. Uh, so if you like this content, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And this is company neat signing out.